Welcome to Craft a Brew. Today we're going to be making some fruited meads, aka melomels. We're going to be making two fruited meads today, one with peaches and one with blueberries. But we don't need the fruit just yet. That happens in a couple of weeks. We're going to start out mixing up our meads just by the instructions that come with our craft to brew mead making kit. The only difference from the instructions by the book is that we're going to leave a little bit of extra space in our carboy so we can add some fruit later. So we'll be sanitizing our gear, mixing our honey with water, adding nutrient and yeast, and fermenting for two weeks. After two weeks of fermentation, we will add the fruit, and I'm gonna show you a couple of different ways we can do that. So first, let's get these meads mixed up and fermented. While we're waiting for the rest of our honey to drain, let's talk about why we're adding the fruit after two weeks. You're probably thinking, we're making a fruit mead. Why isn't there any fruit in it at this stage? Well, that's because at the early stage of fermentation, things are pretty aggressive and there's a lot of carbon dioxide that is carrying volatile compounds up and out of your carboy. And for something like blueberries or peaches and other delicate fruits, those things that smell and taste like the fruits might end up getting carried out of the carboy on an aggressive fermentation. Also, the yeast are chewing a lot harder and faster than later on in fermentation. And so there's just a lot slower and more well-paced fermentation happening on your fruit if you add it nearer to what a lot of folks call the secondary phase of fermentation. So what we're gonna do is ferment these completely dry. And once fermentation has finished, then we're going to add the fruit and it'll ferment very low and slow and a lot more of your fruit flavor will be retained in your final mead. So let's get these finished mixing up. We'll get the yeast in and then we'll let them ferment for two weeks. So our one gallon mark is right here. We're leaving about two fingers width of space under our one gallon mark. That will allow us enough space for about a pound of fruit when we add that in two weeks. All right, let's let these ferment and don't forget that you've got nutrient to add on days two and five. So keep these handy, set a reminder in your phone and make sure they get their dose of nutrient. That'll help them along their way so we make sure fermentation finishes in that two week period. It's been a couple weeks. Our mead is finished fermenting and as you can see, it's actually clearing pretty well already on its own. So we're gonna add our fruit. This is gonna become our peach melomel this one is gonna become our blueberry melomel. Let me show you a little bit about how I treated the blueberries. These blueberries came from a local farm and I can't guarantee that they are free of yeast, but what I can do is treat them with some heat to try and make sure that there's no microorganism on the blueberries that's gonna make its way into our mead. So to do that, I just put them in a stock pot on some medium high heat, crushed them up with a potato masher, stirred them around and brought them to a simmer. Then I cut the heat and let them cool to room temperature. Now, these peaches come straight from a factory. These are flash frozen, so I can be pretty sure there are very little, if any, 
microbial contaminants on the peaches. So the peaches are just gonna go from this bag right into the carboy. You might also take a look at our mead making guide. There are instructions for how you can puree, strain, and boil your fruit if you really want some certainty that no microbes are gonna end up in your mead. Say you're using fresh berries like strawberries or raspberries. You can just blanch them in some boiling water briefly before putting them in. And the same goes for things like bananas or apples. You can chop them up, blanch them, and then put them in. I am guilty of sometimes just putting fruit directly in because at this point you've got quite a bit of alcohol in there and even with some of the dilution from the water carried in in those cells of the fruit, you're probably going to not have a whole lot of risk of microbial contamination. All that is to say, take as many precautions as you can to make sure that wild yeast or bacteria don't make their way into your meat. Our peaches are gonna go right from the flash frozen bag in. Our blueberries are now back at room temperature and they're crushed up and they're ready to go in. So I'm gonna glove up and get our fruit in our carboys and then those are gonna sit for three weeks. That is one pound of peaches in this one and one pound of blueberries in this one. So again, we're gonna put these away for three weeks, let that fruit infuse, and then we'll come back and get it into bottles. It has been three weeks and it's time to get these meads off the fruit and into bottles. And at the same time, we're gonna pull a little taste for ourselves. Refer to your mead making guide for how to start a siphon, but I'm just gonna quickly run through the process here so we can get to tasting. We'll bottle the blueberry mead first, and then we'll bottle the peach mead, and then we'll take a little taste. I'm gonna be using 750 milliliter bottles with corks because I have a wine corker. You don't necessarily need to use a wine corker. You could use tea corks like these if you're not planning on storing these meads for more than six months or so. Or you could use swing top bottles where you just flip the top down with a gasket and seal it that way. But I'm gonna put corks in these so I can put them back for a little bit of extended aging. All right, let's get to it. As easy as that, we've got eight bottles of fruited mead, AKA Melomels. Four bottles of blueberry, four bottles of peach. It's dry. We didn't do any back sweetening here. You could use the Craft to Brew back sweetening kit to stabilize and back sweeten this. Some sweetness will help elevate the fruity flavors from your fruit. But overall, as a relatively young, dry blueberry mead, It's fairly smooth and fruity. My plan for these is to put them back for three to six months and see how they age. The peach meat has a little bit more perceptible sweetness in there. Still finishes really dry, but there's just a touch of sweetness in there that kind of reminds you of biting into a juicy peach. I'll probably also put those back for three to six months, see how those age, and then maybe open a bottle with a nice fish and chips. If you're asking yourself, what do I do while I'm waiting three to six months for my mead to age, start another batch. That's the beauty of this hobby. As soon as one fermentation is done, you can start your next. We're curious, what fruits are you planning to experiment with in your melomels? Drop a comment and let us know what fruit you're putting into your mead. 
Make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel for future homebrewing content. We have a lot in store on the channel coming up soon. Until next time, cheers.